Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, good evening, depending on whenever you guys are watching this. Uh, my name's Steven. Thanks for another episode. And today, I'd like to say, hey, we're going to finally got that Bower Hill bourbon that I told you guys about in the last episode. So we're going to discuss this a little bit again. And I just want to have you guys invite you to have a drink with me. Um, and please write down in the comments what you guys are having and let me know. And it's always good to have a little bit of a cork in your drink today. So Bower Hill, um, like I discussed in the last episode, is in honor of the first and really only skirmish that had some um, citizens die. And it was, they even mentioned the story on the side of the bottle, or on the side of the bottle. And it's a very nice, as you can tell, um, not super dark, but definitely in my last experience, a very good bourbon. Uh, they have a couple different ones. This one is the Barrel Reserve. They have a single barrel, and then I believe they also have a small batch. Um, and it is definitely uh, something I would recommend. It's only about $40, uh, most retail. And to me, it's just a very nice, smooth little bourbon, especially to have on a nice day like today out here in Tampa. Um, you definitely kind of get that nice, like, orangey, citrusy smell on the nose. Very smooth, definitely has that caramel. Um, and then you also do have a little bit of a spice, so it probably has a little bit of a higher rye bill. And I mean, it's 86 proof, so it's not super up there, but definitely a very nice little bourbon. Highly recommend this for sure. Um, so yeah, today's episode, we're going to discuss about the origins going back a little bit further than I did in the last episode with the Whiskey Rebellion. We're going to go back quite a bit of ways and basically back to like 100 AD when the first origins of distilling were actually put down and recorded. Um, and it was by a philosopher, Alexander Aphidias, a Greek philosopher who first wrote about distillation, about the distill or distillation of grains and also wine. And kind of going a little bit more ahead of time, at this time it was known as aqua vita or water of life. And as many of you know or watch the Pirates of the Caribbean series, uh, in the latest one where they're looking for the Fountain of Youth, on the two chalices that were discovered by the Spanish. They actually have one cup says aqua, the other cup says viva, and water of life. And so it's kind of a nice little uh, montage of what bourbon or liquor was um, called back then. And because they actually, this was safer to drink than water. A lot of water back in that those days was filled with a lot of bacteria and very not safe to drink. So um, the distillation process basically killed off a lot of that bacteria and was made easy for people and everybody drank it back then. Uh, from you know old people all the way to young little kids. They drank a liquor or spirit so that they could have some kind of form of safe drinking water. Uh, and as kind of our first little trivia question, uh, which we'll discuss in another video, but just wanted to have this little question and write down it in the comments if you know the answer, but what are the four predominant grains that go into making bourbon? Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of what makes bourbon is what makes whiskey. And so just write down in the comments and let me know. And we'll discuss that again in another episode coming up. So kind of going forward in time, uh, about to 1000 to 1200 AD uh, is when whiskey first came out onto the stage. Um, 
as the distillation process went from mainland Europe to Scotland and Ireland, and where the monks over there in the monasteries who didn't really have access to wines or vineyards uh, took up grains that they had plenty of over there in Scotland and Ireland and started to make whiskey or whiskey, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, whiskey baga, which again loosely translate into water of life, life. And as we know, that eventually that Gaelic pronunciation later became whiskey. So again, that's whiskey is how I think it's said. Um, so that was the first known distillation of whiskey is when it finally came over to Scotland and Ireland in the 1000 to 1200 AD. And the monasteries basically started to produce whiskey um, instead of wine because it was most predominant in Ireland and Scotland. Um, but when it really became available to the masses, it was um, when King Henry VIII of England basically disbanded um, the monasteries when he created the Church of England. So he went away from the Catholic uh, church and created his own because, as we all know, he uh, didn't like some of his wives and wanted divorce, and you cannot do that in Catholic religion. So he created his own, uh, which is the Church of England. And by doing so, it basically made a lot of the monks that were in the monasteries of Scotland and Ireland independent and as that process, as they became independent, they started to have that get to the citizens of those countries and they started to make their own and it became more prevalent. It became, again, uh, the drink of the people um, because a lot of that time wine was pretty much the drink of nobles, royals, and whiskey kind of was the drink of the people. So as we can see, even from the early times, Whiskey, bourbon was the drink of the people. Um, and skipping ahead a couple hundred years now, we go to when now it basically kind of, in the 1600s, it started to make its way over to America. And in those early colonial days, um, you know, you had the Scotch, the Irish come and immigrate into this land. And you basically, they started to settle the different areas such as Western Pennsylvania, which at that time was considered the frontier since, you know, only the Eastern part of the US was actually inhabited by the American colonials from the English, French, Spanish, um, and as they started to settle the new world, they started to move a little bit west and the Scotch, the Irish, they settled those areas. And as we know, uh, started to distill bourbon and whiskey. And of course, at that time, the number one crop was, or the number one product that was coming out of the US basically was rum. Uh, we had more rum being produced in the US than anywhere else in the world. And because of that, England was like, okay, well, you guys are getting rich. We want our cut. And so they started the taxation uh, on all distilled spirits from the U.S. So not just rum, but whiskey as well. And that's how basically the fires got started and got sparked. And we had the American Revolution, as we know, in the 1700s. Um, and so basically it was from this time, I know this is a little short, um, history. I know it can be a little bit more in depth, but you know, it's funny how whiskey's origins are a little bit vague. Uh, not so much is written down about it, but there are some things and, but we will definitely discuss that further. And if you guys want to have more topics on that, please write down in the comments and we'll definitely look into that. Again, this is why I want this show to be 
you know, a little bit different is to kind of explore those topics that people might be interested in just beyond, okay, what's the flavor of a whiskey? What are those notes? But uh, again, yeah. Um, hope you guys are enjoying your uh, drinks today. Uh, again, let me know what you guys have written down uh, or what you guys are having. And like probably my next episode, we might discuss George Washington, as I talked about in a previous episode he was uh probably one of the largest if not the largest distiller in the country at the time um making his own whiskey and was pretty lucrative in that pursuit so i mean you guys got a little bit of a brief history of where our favorite uh spirit comes from and I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode. I know this one's a little bit short, um, but yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Again, uh, also put down what you believe is the answer to that trivia or the trivia question I had give you new earlier, which was what are the four predominant grains in the bourbon? Um, and if you guys have any questions about Bower Hill, let me know. Uh, I can give you the link to their website. It also, uh, some of the retail places that might sell it. I know that ABC definitely has it. I believe maybe uh, Total Wine and some other locations. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this episode was a little short, but um, I hope you have a great day or a great evening. And always, if you want to have a drink, I hope you have it with me and cilantro.